Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Crafting is a huge thing in Grim Dawn and it can be very beneficial at earlier stages in the game to give you an easier leveling progression. But mainly for the end game where you often need to grind quite a bit for different kinds of crops or set pieces. In this video I will go over all my favorite spots for farming, all different kinds of stuffs in Grim Dawn, but mainly trying to focus on where you can get all the different crafting materials if you are struggling on obtaining some. Before we start, just a quick reminder to like and subscribe to show your support. Okay, let's dive in. The first thing that we come across is the Aether Crystal. And this is usually used to craft components or ointments from the Forge Master. The farming route that I'm using is at Warden Laboratory, and here you want to go back and kill the Aether Crystal Clusters. And at this area you can find 13 of these clusters and they will drop Aether Crystals. Depending on what difficulty you're on, it might drop more or less. And you can also find a totem here as well, which is great. You can also use these crystals to make Aether Charge, which is used to some crafting also. Next up I want to talk a little bit about Dynamite. The easiest way would be to go to Arcovia Rift. From here go north until you get to the mine and from here you just want to go northwest and you will have one Dynamite here all the time. Another one is to go to Cronely's Hideout and this is the one that I usually go for. Just because there are so much heroes and bosses here and also some totems while you are running this route. Here you want to run all the way to the end and before Cronley there is a spot where it's always going to be a dynamite. And also once we are here you can also get some royal honey from killing the hero enemy bees just to the north at the same time. Another spot that I want to mention is at Malmouth outskirts and here you want to run south until you get to the cellar and here you want to go west until you get over the bridge for the dynamite spot. Right next to it you have another that's inside the scrap pile so you do get two dynamites here for each run. And also at this area is used to farm for the boots of the Craig sets and it can be dropped from the boss Terranox. Next up we got Scrap, which is mainly using for crafting rare armors and weapons, which can be a huge deal if you are lacking some stats or resist for instance. Especially if you are playing hardcore, it might be very helpful early on. And this you will mainly obtain by just playing the game. It drops some various monsters and hero enemies around the world. You can also find this in troves, chests and stuff like that. You can use the dismantle function also by using the inventor and if you just put your epics that you don't want and dismantle them you will get a lot of scraps by doing so and you will also get different crafting materials and components as well. The way I obtain mine most of the time is just simply by logging into the game, go to the vendor and just buy them and then you log out and rejoin a new game and do the same process again. Don't forget to get the other vendor by rescuing the guy from the slits so you can have two vendors instead. You can also do the same if you got the Crucible DLC by simply joining a game and buy the scraps and repeat. And next I would like to go over the rest of the crafting materials, the more hard come by. There are quite a bit of them and they will drop from killing bosses, nemesis, hero, enemies and depending on what type of enemy you are killing and also in some cases in what area you are you will have a chance of obtaining some of these crafting materials. You will also have a chance of obtaining them from trove chests and also by dismantling as I mentioned as well. First I would like to go over a little bit about the Ancient Heart, Blood of Cathom and the Tainted Brain Matter. If you go to the Cursed Smith at the gates of Necropolis here you can convert between Tainted Brain Matter, Ancient Heart and also Blood of Cathon at the cost of 5000 iron per conversion. So if you do have a lot of one of these types you can go and just transfer them to one of the other ones if you might need to. But how do I do to obtain all these different crafting materials? 
Well, as I mentioned, it's mostly from enemy drops. And what I like to do is to go for totem farms to get these different kinds of materials. And if you're unfamiliar with what the totem is, there are this mini event that you can start by simply clicking on the totem and there will spawn a lot of enemy heroes and monsters around and once you defeat them all they will drop some extra loot and you will also get some loot from completing the totem as well. While doing this you have a chance of dropping the crafting materials from the monsters and you will also gain a lot of legendaries and set pieces as well. So there are six different types of monster totems corresponding of the type of creature they spawn. The first totem type that we have is the Aether Warp Totem and these spawn Aetherials. The second one is Celestial Totem and these spawn Celestials. We got the Eldritch Totem which is Eldritch. We got the Savage Totem which is spawns Beasts. We also have the Spirit Totem which is Undead. And lastly, we got the Void Touch Totem, which spawns Chthonians. Let's start with the Ancient Heart. So, these can drop from Beast, Beastkins, and also Eldritch Creatures. We have Blood of Chthon and Chthonic Seal of Binding, and this can be dropped from Chthonic Creatures. We got the Tainted Brain Matter, which can be dropped from Ethereal Creatures. We also have a thing called Manticore Eye. And these can drop from Manticores. We also have Ethereal Massive and Ethereal Mutagen. And these can drop from Act 5 and 6 from Ethereal Heroes and Bosses. We got the Ugden Bloom which drops from Swamp Golem Creatures, Heroes and Bosses. We got the Vendigo Spirits. It drops from Vendigo Ancients, Heroes and Bosses also. And we also have Eldritch Essence, which drops from Eldritch, Heroes and Bosses. And then we have Celestial Lotus. It's mostly dropped from doing Shattered Realm. But it will also drop from all Nemesis Bosses and also Korvac, which is the last boss in the Forgotten DLC. And they all have a chance for it to drop. Before we end up this video, I would like to share some of the routes that I usually take while doing these totem runs. The first one that I do is going to Arkovian Foothills. And here you can simply go to the east and you will have all three different locations pretty close to another. Next up at Twin Falls and here you want to go to the south and same as before you will have all three totem spawns pretty much at the same location. Next I like to go to the Blood Grove and here if you are lucky you can get one totem just south of you. But you will also have all three totem spawns west of the waypoint. And let's move over to the Ashes DLC. And here I like to start in Ugdenbog and here we have two totem locations just south of the waypoint. Here we can also gain a lot of Ugdenbog blooms. And we also can gain some Venigo spirits while killing the enemies between the totems. Another location also in Ashes DLC is at Crown Hills. And here you will have three different locations all just north of the waypoint. The last route that I'm using is at the Forgotten Gods DLC. And it's at Corven City Rift. Just go southeast. And you will have all the spawns at pretty much the same place. And there we go everyone. This was my guide on how to obtain all the crafting materials in Grim Dawn. There are obviously a lot of different methods that you can do to get all of these crafting materials. But here's are my favorite methods and also farming routes. And hopefully these might help you out as well. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe even share a comment down below what your favorite methods are to farm in Grim Dawn. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!